In this video, we're going to replace our current Windows drive with a new SSD. And we're also going to copy over Windows, all of our programs, and all of our files to the new SSD. And this process will be the same whether you are replacing a standard hard drive or a smaller capacity SSD. Now I'll be using a Samsung drive, and Samsung provides the program we're going to use to clone the current Windows drive and deploy it on the new SSD. If you happen to be using a different brand SSD, no problem. Most of them will also provide a similar cloning program. But if they don't, again, no problem. You can always get something like Acronis True Image or Macrium Reflect. And the process will be similar between all programs. Now, before we begin, you'll also need a SATA to USB adapter. These come in many different forms and it really doesn't matter what kind you get. So just be sure to pick one up whenever you're buying your new SSD. And I'll put some links in the description below for adapters you may want to consider. You may also need a two and a half inch to three and a half inch SATA adapter if your computer has three and a half inch drive bays. So three and a half inch is the size of a standard hard drive, while two and a half inch is the size of an SSD. Again, I'll have links below in case you need one of these as well. Now don't be intimidated by installing a new SSD. It's actually one of the easiest things to do. In fact, things can only connect one way, so it's pretty much impossible to mess it up. If you look at an SSD, you'll see the SATA data and the SATA power connectors. And you'll also see these tabs, which prevents the drive from being inserted the wrong way. So again, you really can't mess this up. But anytime you are working with electronics, there's always a chance something may go wrong. So make sure that you accept that risk before you continue. All right, first up, we're going to clone our current Windows drive and all the files to the new SSD. So connect your new SSD to the SATA to USB adapter. As you can see, this will only connect one way, so don't force it. It should slid in pretty easily. Once you have the drive connected to the adapter, connect the USB to your computer. Then we need to download and install the cloning software. So for Samsung SSDs, come to this site. And here you can download just the migration software or download Samsung Magician and the migration software in one file. Samsung Magician is optional, so I'll just leave this up to you, but we'll get both. If you're not using a Samsung SSD, then head to the manufacturer's site for your drive, or you could get something like Macrium Reflect. Then we'll unzip and install the migration software. All right, open the data migration program. Across the top, you'll select your source drive. Now your source drive is your current C drive, otherwise known as the drive that currently has Windows on it. And this is the drive that we are cloning. You can see it's almost out of space. So I'm upgrading to a larger drive and everything on this drive will be cloned. That includes Windows, all files like your documents, photos, music, etc., plus all of your programs. So you shouldn't have to reinstall anything. The data migration program should automatically select the proper source disk for you, but if it didn't, you can always use this dropdown. So there's our source disk, it's the C drive, and we can see the capacity and how full it is. So this is the proper source drive. Then we need to select the target drive and the target drive will be your new SSD that we already have connected to the computer. Now I already have a couple of Samsung drives in this computer, so I need to select the proper drive. If you select the wrong drive, all data on that drive will be erased. So take your time and make sure you select the proper drive. I know the capacity of the new SSD is one terabyte and it's an 870. So this is the proper drive. Here it's showing me how full the drive will be after the cloning process. All right, double check your settings, make sure everything is correct. And it is. Then click start. You'll get this warning saying that any data on the target drive will be erased. That's fine, the drive is brand new, so there's no data on it anyway. 
Also, make sure to close any open files or programs. So close down your browser, your media player, any open documents, etc., etc. Once you do that, click OK, and the cloning process will start. Now this can take anywhere from an hour to two hours or even three hours. So I really suggest that you just walk away, go grab something to eat, watch some TV, play a video game, you know, whatever, and leave your computer alone. Right now it's saying that it may be around two to three hours. So I'll just walk away and we'll come back after the computer has shut down. And we're back. After about two and a half hours or so, the computer shut down automatically and the cloning process is done. Now we'll disconnect the SSD from the adapter and it's time to install the drive. If you're using a laptop, you'll remove the cover from the drive compartment, then unscrew the caddy and slide out the drive. Then remove the screws from the drive caddy and pull out the old drive. You'll notice screw holes on both sides of your SSD, so line that up with the caddy, screw it down, and there we go. Now we'll insert the drive into the SATA port. And as you can see, this can only go in one way. So slide it in, give it a little push, and there you go. Be sure to replace any screws, put the cover back on, screw it down, and that's it. Turn on your laptop and enjoy the enhanced speed from your new SSD. If you are replacing a drive in a desktop, first unplug the computer, then remove the side cover. You may have a handle or there may be screws on the rear. You may also need to remove some other shrouds depending on your computer. Now there's a couple ways your drive may be mounted in your desktop. If it's in a drive bay like this, then simply pull the drive out, remove the caddy or the tray from the old hard drive, and insert the SSD into the tray. But as you can see, our two and a half inch SSD isn't going to fit into the three and a half inch tray. So we'll need a two and a half inch to three and a half inch SATA adapter. These are very simple to use. They have the SATA interface on the front and the port on the rear. So slide the SSD into the port. Again, this can only go in one way, so don't force it. There we go. Then you'll probably want to add some screws on both sides to secure it. Then insert the adapter into the tray. All right, now all we have to do is slide it in to the drive bay. Here's a close look at the port. You know, the good thing about these drive bays is you don't have to mess with the SATA cables and power plugs. All of that is already connected for you. All right, slide in the drive. Don't push too hard, but it should click into place. And that's it, you're good. Now, on the other hand, if you don't have a drive bay, you'll have to remove the old drive and manually mount the new one and then you'll connect a SATA cable to the SATA data port, and the other end will connect to a SATA port on the motherboard. Then you'll plug in a SATA power port from the power supply to the SATA power connector. Again, both of these cables can only connect one way, so don't force it. And since you're replacing an old drive, you should already have the SATA cable and a free SATA power port. However, if you want to replace the SATA cable, you are free to do so. What I would suggest is that you unplug both cables from the old drive and make sure you leave the SATA cable connected to the motherboard. Then all you have to do is plug the SATA cable into the new SSD and connect the SATA power. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Pull out the old drive. I've already disconnected the SATA power. Then pull out the SATA cable from the old drive. Again, leave the other end connected to the motherboard. Then connect the SATA cable to the new SSD. Mount the drive in the case. And then connect the SATA power. Once again, these things only connect one way, so you can't really mess it up. And that's it. Your new SSD is installed. 
So let's button up our computer, put the side panel back on, connect the power cable, your monitor, any other devices like your keyboard and mouse, power it on, and boom, there we go. Windows comes right up and you're ready to rock. If we look at the activation, you can see Windows 11 is still activated and working properly. All of our programs are still there. Here we can see the new C drive and the free space. All of our photos are still there. Music is still there. Our documents are still there. Everything from the old drive is still here. Now you may run into a few programs that say they are not activated. This is usually because some programs lock their authorizations to the serial number of your OS drive. And since we installed a new drive, it has a different serial number. So no big deal, simply reauthorize your program, no need to reinstall it, just reauthorize. And that's it. Studio One opens up just fine. I think I had a total of two programs that I had to reauthorize and everything else just worked. DaVinci Resolve works, Affinity Photo works, Pro Tools works, Windows works. No need to reinstall anything. Real quick, we'll open up Samsung Magician, and this is an optional utility program where you can keep an eye on the health of your SSD, run scans, encrypt, secure erase, you know, things like that. You can also always uninstall this if you don't want it. Now, what do you do with your old drive? Well, you can keep it for backup, just in case something goes wrong with your new SSD. Now that is unlikely, but it does happen from time to time. So you might wanna hang on to this drive for a little bit. Or if you have a free secondary bay in your computer, you can install it, format the drive, and use it as a storage drive for your files. If you want to know more about installing a secondary drive, I'll put the links to those videos in the description below. And that's it. We've installed a new and fast SSD in our system, copied over Windows, all of our files, and all of our programs.